Hey, TJ. Hey, Kelly. How's it going? I'm um, not too bad. How are you? What's um, new? New. What is new? Well, I'm down to 222. That's amazing. Yeah. I haven't been that light since, uh, I think since we were in school or close to that. So about five, six years ago. That's awesome. Yeah. I've Congratulations. Been, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's taken a while, but I mean, I broke it down, like divided, you know, what I used to weigh by weeks and stuff. So it's about a pound and a half a week, which is kind of where you want to be at. Anyways. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I'm switching up the diet, changing um, some things, but we're at this point to where see what uh, try some new things and hopefully get down to my goal weight. By Are you plateaued year. right now? Um, not really. I don't think so. Hmm. I started. Um, actually, we'll be talking about what, what I started this past week in the podcast today, um, which is actually funny. But uh, how was your week? Uh, well, my week was good. Um, we my weekend we went camping. Which is always an adventure. Oh, yeah. We decided to take the dog with us, the oh, little one. Oh, man. The little one, which was <laughs> an adventure. She actually, she was real, she was much better than I thought she would be because there was like a thousand dogs at this campground and the campground was full. Um, but she gets car sick. Oh, does she? So, you know, the, the ride there and the ride home were, you know, she's kind of miserable and you just feel really bad for her. But, Otherwise went good. Um, it was a little cold. It rained quite a bit one night. Um, so, you know, like I said, camping is always an adventure, but overall it went pretty good. <laughs> Did you go locally? Yeah, we went to Mohican, which oh, okay. is about an hour from here or from us. And um, so, yeah, it's a really nice campground, um, but we were a little ill prepared for the, the nighttime temperatures. So, you know, we, it, it's always interesting. Yeah, it's always fun. Actually, <laughs> my, was... my daughter got lost in the middle of the night going to the bathroom. Oh, that's nice. So, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> yeah, I bet it was. My grandmother, when, when we went to camping trip, she told us, oh, you need to bring all these clothes. She ended up wearing, like, underwear on her head because <laughs> it was so cold one night. Yeah. Yes. So. We were chilly. Yeah. Anyway, um... So one of my clients um, asked me, she, we were working out or whatever, and she asked me um, what I thought about intermittent fasting. And um, unless you've been living under a rock, intermittent fasting is probably one of the hottest um, trends in dieting right now or um, in ways to lose weight, um, that type of thing. Sure, yeah. So that's what we're going to cover today. So first, I, I think we should start with like, what is intermittent fasting? Um, and I just sort of wanted to lead this off with the fact that everyone, well, m almost everybody fasts. I mean, if you think about it, fasting can be a scary term, but we all do it every night. So unless you're getting up in the middle of the night, you are actually already fasting. Um, humans have also fasted since the dawn of time, either forced via famine or by choice. A lot of people fast for religious reasons. So it's not like this is a new thing, but right now, you know, it's sort of a new thing because people are using it to extend their life um, because there is some pretty good research backing up fasting for life extension and for, um, and for weight loss. So um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that as far as like what fasting is. Not really. I just think it's just one of the biggest topics right now, as long as with other other things. But um, I mean, I started it, noticed about a lot of benefits. You know, the only problem I think with fasting, depending on how you do it, is getting over like being hungry if you're not eating till noon. Yeah, so. I noticed that like when I've played with fasting, that the first couple of weeks are definitely the hardest because. You know, when you're used to eating at a certain time, your body is sending out those hunger signals right. at those times. And, you know, it can be really hard to get over that. But eventually, you know, your body does adjust to it. And, and there there is a reduction in hunger. And you won't be hungry at those times where you normally would have been before. But at first, yeah, you're, you're hungry. You're thinking about food. Um so, I mean, that's, I, I don't know, what, what is your experience? I, I mean, did you just start this or? So I did it a while ago um, when I was really heavy. So I would fast till about noon. I would eat like that eight hour window because I think the 16 eights like the most common. 
Okay. Where it's like 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of feasting type thing. So I'd eat from noon till about eight, and then I'd shut it off till the next day. Okay. Um, and I had pretty good results doing that. I didn't have to. I didn't work out. I kind of just ate what I want within reason. I think I had Dairy Queen like once or twice a week. Right. Um, but other than that, uh, I didn't really eat salads or any of that stuff. I just ate what I want with yeah within reason. Right. I, I actually think that's a really common misconception is that you can eat whatever you want during your feeding window. And we're gonna I think we're gonna talk we're gonna cover that in a little while because we're gonna sort of do this as a Q and A. Yeah. Um so you said like I think you might have mentioned to me at some point that you did is this when you did fasting, was this when you were like at your heaviest or something? Yeah, so I was at my heaviest right around we'll just call it two ninety. So uh, I met with a friend of mine. Um, I did like a keto or low carb diet, and I did that as well okay. to lose, you know, forty pounds. Um, I mean, I felt great. I mean, I think your mental clarity goes up a little bit, right? A little bit in the morning, um, but it's uh, depending on how hungry you are and if you can get over that and when you wake up. I mean, if you're getting up like normal person, like six seven o'clock it should be easy to make it to 12 i get up at 4 30 so i'm almost waiting what eight hours before i eat right so i'm like i'm like 10 o'clock i'm like oh my gosh i'm so hungry <laughs> right. i'm like drinking like, my water i really like to eat yeah i mean when you do eat because i mean i get headaches and stuff i'm like oh thank god right i ate food yeah. I mean, yeah. at first there, yeah. you can get all kinds of weird symptoms like the headaches, you know, it's, it's almost like a withdrawal process. Yeah. You get like hunger, you get like hunger pains and right. stuff, but it's not, it's not so unbearable that you can't make it. But Right. It's doable. Like, so is this something you were, I mean, have you maintained it? Like, so when did I'm, you maintain the weight loss from it? So yeah. Yeah. Cause okay. I, I think I'm, I went back up to back in January, like 247. So I was right around that when I ended it. Um, back in January. So when I started getting up early and dieting and doing that like I'm doing now, um, I didn't start putting that in until, you know, you get to the point where you're like, okay, I don't feel like I'm losing weight as fast as I should. Then you add something because right. um, your body adapts like we all know. Right. So right now it's, you know, just intermittent fasting and I've done it before. It's pretty easy. And I actually fasted for a full 24 hours about a month ago. How was that for you? It's fine. Yeah? A lot of Monster Energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. See, okay. Because caffeine, well, isn't it, isn't it caffeine like a uh, suppressant, hunger suppressant or something? Caffeine is, yeah. yeah. But so I think we're going to talk a little bit more about that later in the podcast. So I don't I, drink caffeine as much now. Well, that's all right. That's Because my wife it. yells at me, so <laughs> that's why. You don't need it. I do need it. <laughs> So I, um, I have tried, like I said, I've tried some intermittent fasting. Um, I have mixed feelings on fasting and I think, you know, again, this is just coming from my personal, um, my personal, I guess, side of the story. I know some people, some women have great success with well, intermittent fasting. Well, yeah, because Kelly was an elite athlete through her entire life. <laughs> she was never no. 70 pounds overweight. <laughs> That's why. I've been overweight though before, um, but m my experience with fasting is mixed. And like I said, I think that might be just a product of the fact that I've struggled with some disordered eating patterns and things. Right. Um, I have experimented with pretty much all of the different kinds. So I've, um, I've done the 16 to eight, I've done 24 hour water fasts. Um, I've done, I've done water fasts that lasted up to 48 hours. Yeah. Um, I did at one point because, you know, you get in this mindset of more is better. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, I took it too far and I was fasting. At, at some point I was fasting once a week for 24 hours, but then I was also doing the 16 to 8 at the same time. Okay. Um, which, especially for women, they don't tend to recommend doing more than one type of fasting at a time. Yeah, it's double, yeah. Right, because it just gets to be too much. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then you wind up in a situation where you actually can't physically eat enough. And if you're training at the same time, um, that can be really hard on your body and your hormones. So, um, again, I think that's a lot more common in women, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how fasting is different for women and men and right. 
men do typically tend to respond better to fasting. We're just better at everything. Well, right, right. No, you guys are just lucky <laughs> hormonally. Yeah, but we're not so, that better at everything. For me, the pros, though, it taught me that there are a couple of pros to fasting um, that I will definitely admit to. And the the I think the number one thing for me is that it taught me to, quote unquote, sit with my hunger. So I was I'm one of these people who I fear being too hungry. OK. And I don't know if that's because I fear that there will be a loss of control. But fasting taught me that I can be hungry and that the hunger will fade and, and it will go away. Yeah, you're not going to die. Basically. Right, yeah. right. Um, it also did, when I was able to do it consistently, it did reduce my hunger overall. But as far as the cons, there was more, there's more cons for me than there mm -hmm. is pros. And I would say number one is that I like eating and specifically I like eating breakfast. Um, I also like cream in my coffee and cream breaks yeah, your fast. Yeah. Um, I've been, I've been unable to maintain fasting long term. So for me, it's more like a diet than a lifestyle because it's just not something that I feel like I can maintain for life. Sure. Um, fasting for more, fasting for 24 hours. I mean, in my, my opinion, it sucks. <laughs> it also made my binge eating tendencies worse. Um, and currently if I fast for longer than 14 hours, it seems like it gives me license to eat more during my feeding window. Like sure. even outside of like my hunger signals, I'll end I'll, I'll end up, you know, my portion sizes will be huge and I'll overeat. And for me in the long term, I think it's caused me to gain weight versus the lose. Yeah, the opposite. Because right. yeah, I just sense. I can't maintain the the fasting that allowed me to maintain a lower weight. Oh, right, because, I mean, you'd have to, if you were to do that, you'd have to adjust your calories and everything just to even Right. And you don't even know what that those would be. Right. Because you're right. eating more. <laughs> right. Than that exactly. Time frame. Exactly. Right. So what kinds of fasting are there? So we, we kind of mentioned a couple. I don't know mm -hmm. if you want to talk about, like, what kind of fasts there are. So, um, you know, there's, like, the most popular one, I think, is like the 16 8, because I think that's kind of where they say to start. Is that generally. called the lean gains? Is that the one that they I term believe lean gains? so? Yeah. Yeah, because that's the, because I know he has a couple different ones, but I think that's the one he has that's the most popular. Because it's right. like, if you're going to start doing one, here's one you start with. Right. And so, what that basically means is you're doing 16 hours of fasting. Most of that is done while you're sleeping. So right. if you go to bed at eight o'clock or nine o'clock and you don't get up till eight o'clock the next day, it's 12 hours. So, right. um, and then you just have that four to six hour window where you're not eating. And then you start, once you start consuming calories, whether it's coffee or sugar, whatever, I don't know, a carrot, I guess. Right. A celery. If that, you can count that as calories, like water. Pretty much anything. Basically. Well, yeah. uh. It's more of like the insulin response that it breaks your fast. So then you have eight hour window. Say if it's twelve to eight, you have eight hour window to get all your calories in for the day, and that's basically the general um, outline of what that would be. And there's other fasts. I mean, there's that twenty four hour fast, which you know you've done, I've done. I think the worst part about that was um, doing it, and then. When I went to my in-laws' house, I would literally just chow down on like half right. a jar of cookies. Right. I was like, I want cookies so bad. <laughs> and you know they're calorically dense, so you eat like five of them, and they're like 600 calories themselves, you know. So, right. So um, you just kind of get that. I mean, there's there's benefits to doing it, and there's not benefits. But, I mean, if you're not eating junk, I think you're okay. Um, what about the other ones? I know, let's see what we have listed here. What, you got five – Two? What's that one? I don't know what that one is. That one is um, you consume you consume normal calories on um, uh, five five days a week. Okay. And then on two days, and I believe it's two non consecutive days, but two days of the week you consume five only five hundred to six hundred calories. So you have basically like yeah. a single small. Meal. I did that one too. Yeah. You did that one. Yeah. 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 Did. It's not bad. No. I think it's I think it's better because you know you can eat something. 
I mean, if you were right. just to do two 24 hour fasts and not eat anything, you'd be like, oh, I can't uh, do it. and especially if it's it. if you're at work, imagine what, what work day would probably be the worst. Like usually you think about doing it. You're not going to do it on Monday. Right. Like, Mondays are terrible. Right. You think, okay, maybe Tuesday, Thursday, uh, maybe Wednesday, Wednesdays suck. So it's really kind of figuring out when you want to do it. I mean, I've done them. Right. Okay. Uh, and, and initially, you know, you kind of feel like after a while with fasting, you can sort of get that clarity, you know, when you're fasting. Yeah, but mental at clarity. First, yeah. You kind of are real foggy when you're fasting yeah, and you're slow so. and you're, all you're thinking about is food. And so doing these longer fasts, um, like on a work day or on a Monday, can be really, really hard because you have a headache, you're thinking about food, you're hungry. And you just kind of feel a little bit foggy. Yeah, that was this morning. I was like, can I eat chew gum? <laughs> and I'm like, I looked it up online. I'm like, can I choose gum fast? And there's like, there's sugar alcohol, which technically breaks it. But yes. I'm like, right. no, I don't care. I'm chewing my gum. Right. And see, and that's where I really struggle with my disordered eating patterns. When you start to think to yourself, am I allowed to chew gum? You know, is gum going to break my fast? And, I, that, you know, I'm like, you know, is that crazy to be asking if, if I'm worrying about whether or not gum. It's only five calories. It's to... really nothing. <laughs> no. So, I mean, there's conflicting results. Cause it I'm... wasn't the gum that made me fat. Right. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the 20 pounds of gum. You right. Um, but, I mean, there's conflicting stories because I looked it up and they're like, oh, you can, you can't. I mean, <sighs> The response is probably so minimal that you can probably get away with it. Right. And I've heard some people say that if you don't, if, if it's not more than 50 calories, it doesn't break your fast. Right. So like a teaspoonful of creamer in your coffee wouldn't break your fast. But for me, because I'm a very all or nothing person, mm -hmm. if I'm fasting, I am not adding even like to me, that's breaking the fast. That's you, breaking the rules. Can you do coffee? Black so, coffee? So... I heard you could. I'm not sure. So, okay. It, it, I think we're going to get into this, but it depends on the reason you're fasting. Got it. Okay. So, yeah. I think we're going to get into that, though, in a few minutes. But there is one more that's listed here. Um, did you want to say a little bit about circadian rhythm eating? No. That's all you. That's all I, me. I, don't. I know what it is, but I'm not going to explain it very well. So, so the circadian rhythm eating, um, and, and I'm probably not gonna, going to explain it very well either, but... This is probably what I uh, am doing right now, like without necessarily even trying. It's basically eating with the uh, eating with the sun. Yeah. It's it's how most people um, would um, would fast. Right. So you're gonna probably stop eating somewhere around six or seven p.m. You're going to go to bed, you're going to sleep through the night, and then you're probably going to start eating somewhere, you know, around 8 a.m. So um, it's a 10 to, uh, it's a 10 to 12, actually, no, it's probably like a 12 to maybe 14 hour fast. I would say, well, it depends. It depends on yes. the summers and whatnot. Exactly. Yeah. It really depends on the light. Um, it depends on the sun. Um, I do so. Have I do have a question though, because yeah. I know circadian rhythm. I was listening to a podcast. They talked about when you get up in the morning, the bacteria in your stomach reacts to light for some reason, and that starts your your day or like that. Do you happen to know? That I don't know. No, okay. No, I, I have not heard a, about the bacteria in the stomach. Yeah, because it talks about like the gut microbiome and that stuff. So that could be right. that could be something we cover later. But I was just curious if you know. Yeah, no, it. actually, that would be uh, that might be an interesting topic to sort of research and cover uh, at a later time. So, but I would say circadian rhythm eating is probably going to be the most realistic, um, especially for women. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to make more sense. It's not you know as like a strict of fasting regimen. Um, and the, the feeding windows are going to be longer. So if I was going to do any of these, that one would work best for me. And I would say that that's probably what I'm naturally doing right now because I tend to try and stop eating by six or six thirty, And then I 
typically don't eat again or ingest anything until 6.30 or 7 a.m. the next day. Right. So that's a 12-ish, 13-hour. Well, you, you have an extra hour of daylight. You have an extra time to eat. What are you doing? <laughs> it's 7.30. I, I don't like to eat too close to bedtime. Oh, yeah. So that's is not a good thing for me. That makes sense. All right. So, TJ, which fast is best? I don't know. Which fast is best for you? I would say the one you can do... I would not recommend the 24-hour fast, especially if you're starting out. Um, so let's see. We have the 5-2, we have the 24, we have the 16-8, and the circadian rhythm. So if I was to choose one, I'm currently doing the 16-8 for myself. Um, but I really I really think even now it's pretty extreme. And maybe if you're starting out, I would think the circadian rhythm would be even be better. Yeah. Um, just depending. I mean, my life is pretty well regimented now i can i can get away with it right um my wife's life with um my son is not because he's all over the place and doesn't go to bed till like eight o'clock some night so it might just depend on what your lifestyle and what your overall work eh, schedule is and stuff like that i would think yeah, I think, I mean, that's probably the best advice that you could give anybody about what the best fast is. I don't think there is a best fast for those reasons. And I would say if you're going to fast and that and you're already losing weight, I would say keep losing weight doing what you're doing and then switch over to one of these. Right. Yeah. I, I think, you know, and I think that's such a great piece of advice because so many people try and do everything at the same time. They're like, I'm going to do an hour of cardio and I'm going to do intermittent fasting and I'm only going to eat 1500 calories a day, Yeah. you know, and it's, it's just too much. And then when you do plateau, because you still will plateau, then you've got nowhere to go. Yeah. Where to go? Oh, I got to work out for 17 hours. Right. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Great stuff. So what breaks a fast? So yeah. this is where things get a little bit tricky. And if you search the internet, you will find all all different kinds of answers and opinions to this. And so what I'm going to say is de is definitely still opinion, you know, coming oh, yeah. from me. It's an opinion. We're not geniuses. Right, right. But this, the, what breaks a fast is dependent on why you are fasting. So studies show that cell autophagy, which is the process of cellular cleanup, which can be important for life extension, is affected by consuming anything during a fast except for water. So, so what is cellular autophagy? It's basically like cellular turnover. So it's, the, it's what happens when you are not consuming food and your body enters that fasted state and it's basically like your cells are sweeping up, they're cleaning up. Okay. And that process can extend your, your life. And it has been shown to do that in, in mice and rats. Um, but the problem is, is that even if, if your body has to metabolize anything during that time, it um, can have a negative effect on cellular autophagy. Hmm. So that includes caffeine. So because your liver has to process caffeine, so it turns off some of those beneficial things about cellular cellular autophagy. So if you are fasting because you want for, for the life extension benefits, it needs to be only water. Again, this is just my opinion. So, so good thing I have shunned monsters. Right. Starting Sunday. <laughs> starting. Is this yesterday yeah, Sunday yesterday. or next yesterday. week Sunday? Yesterday. So I'm doing good today. <laughs> On the other hand, black coffee, so consuming caffeine, has been shown to increase the effects of fat loss during fasting for those who want to lose weight. But that tastes terrible. <laughs> I know, right? I can hardly drink black coffee anymore. I can so. hardly drink coffee. Oh, really? Yeah, mine's like the color of your skin. That's how <laughs> that's how creamy it is. Nice. So yeah, that would break your fast. Yeah. But if you are a black coffee drinker, then and your and your goal with fasting is weight loss, then you know you're probably okay. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, black coffee, obviously can't put cream, sugar, all that fun stuff. I can't drink Monster Energy drinks anymore. <laughs> what can I drink? You just said water. That's it? Water. That's boring. I mean, even, and, and I'm not sure on this, but 
even herbal tea, you know, depending on the herbs that are in the tea. Yeah, green tea. Has... Would have to be processed through your liver. Well, because green tea has caffeine in it, doesn't it? Well, actually? yeah, yes. Green tea, yeah. most green teas, unless you buy decaf, but still... There are probably certain um, herbs that, you know, would have to be processed by, you know, your your stomach, your intestines, or your liver and your kidneys. So, again, you know, it, it really depends on the reasons that you're fasting. So you have to be clear on that for yourself on why you're fasting. Right. Okay. That makes total sense. So my life just got worse. I can't drink anything <laughs> but water. That's okay. I can deal with that. All right. So... Can I eat whatever I want during a fast, during my feeding window, I should say? Well, I, I think that's really a common uh, misconception that fasting allows you to eat whatever you want. Um, and and you will hear this in an effort to sell books or get you to their websites or, uh, you know, people who are trying to sell intermittent fasting like programs and books they will make it seem like it's a diet where you can eat whatever you want. But then when you actually start to read between the lines of the things that they say and that they write, every one of them will say something to the effect of, to get the best results, you need to eat healthy, unprocessed foods during your feeding window. And you cannot overeat. So if you have 2,000 calories, would let's just say that's our parameters. You can't go above that. Right. And you can't eat like Dairy Queen, right? You or can't Oreos. just eat all Dairy Queen or all Oreos. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. So you know, if if you're using fasting, and I, and I've done this, unfortunately, I've used fasting to um, make up for like when I overeat. Sure. And I would fast for 24 hours, and but then it would lead me to overeat again the next day, which right. would lead me to think I needed to fast again for 24. You know, it's just a vicious cycle. It can become a, a, a cycle where you're using the fasting to sort of try to mitigate a bad diet, but it still won't. It still won't mitigate a bad diet, and especially if you are overeating or binge eating. Okay. Um, theoretically, though. With IF, there are no foods are like off the table. The you know it's recommended that you still try and eat a healthy diet, but you're not like trying to cut out carbs or you know cut out fat. You can eat the foods that you like during your eating window, but you still have to be really careful about you know how many calories you're eating and taking in. You have to be aware of those things. So during that feeding window, because I know we talked about carbs and fats and all that stuff, would you recommend certain things? I mean, we, okay, so say it's eight o'clock, I'm done eating. What should I have ate during that window? I would say fats would be one because you're going to keep you fuller for longer, especially if you're fasting for 16 hours. Again, the smart thing would be to eat an overall healthy diet that would be composed of lots of vegetables, some fruits, healthy fats, healthy proteins, and then, you know, smaller amounts of, I guess, you know, what, we, what would be considered junk food, if mm -hmm. that helps you sort of, you know, maintain um, your healthy eating. I guess what, what I have found personally and what I've seen some of my clients do is that they'll, they'll do the fasting thing, but then they'll end up gorging during their feeding windows, either because they're so hungry that they can't help it or because they feel entitled because they just fasted for X number of yeah. hours. I burn an extra 2,500 calories. You mean I can't eat these? Right. What right. Exactly. <laughs> Again, you know, you have to be so clear on your goals for why you're fasting because otherwise it really, it becomes a license to just overeat or eat whatever you want. And it just doesn't work that way. Exactly. I mean, just like the, just like the cookies, man, those cookies are good. I probably <laughs> ate way too many cookies. I really, I think that's, I think that's really probably the most common reason that people don't lose weight with yeah. intermittent fasting. But I did, so I'm allowed. It worked for you, I'm but allowed. you're a guy, so. Yes, we yeah. are. <laughs> awesome. So what, TJ, I'm going to let you run us through what the potential benefits of intermittent fasting are. Sure. So we got a few here, you know, you, we talked about how, how we do it. So what are the benefits really? So. Your HGH, our human growth hormone, will skyrocket, increasing, um, let's say, about fivefold. And that's just benefit fat loss, muscle gain, when you're working out, and all that fun stuff. And, you know, 
keeping your HGH levels higher is definitely going to help with those goals if you're trying to reach them. Um, I don't, and I'm, I'm assuming for men and women, it's going to be different, but it's going to increase either way across the board. Right. Right. Uh, we talked about insulin sensitivity, uh, last week, I think, or a couple of weeks ago. Um, it improves that just by knowing that your insulin level is going to drop to, you know, a relatively steady level. You know, it's going to obviously spike during that feeding window, but during that level where it's low, it's going to make your body fat a lot more accessible for start pulling from for energy because you got to imagine 16 hours without food, your body's got to pull calories from somewhere. It's going to pull all the glycogen out of your muscles more than likely, and then where else does it go? It's not going right. to eat, chew your fat up, or no, it's not going to chew your muscle up. It's going to chew your fat up. So that's basically another another reason to do that. So um, we talk about cellular repair. That's the uh, that's the autophagy thing. Autophagy yes. part, you know, um, it increases longevity. I need, think we talked about. Let's see if I look at my notes. I think it was what. Let's see, thirty six to eighty three percent in rats lifespan, just from that, which is crazy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's any human studies. I didn't see any that are out there. I would think it would be very hard to even do that. It would be really difficult to do a human study. I know that there's a couple of. I, I think it's a lot of anecdotal evidence, but um, there are a couple things that show that humans who do low calorie diets, which low calorie diets are really hard to maintain over a long period of time, but people who are living on low calorie diets, they, they live longer and maybe they live longer. Which is weird. Maybe it just feels like they live longer, you know? I mean, <laughs> if you're only eating like 1100 calories a day, I mean, that's like we just feel like you would live longer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> you'd be yeah. really unhappy too. <laughs> yeah. You'd be, you'd be angry, all hangry all the time. Right. Um, so, uh, it's, it increases gene expression, which we can kind of, we're not going to cover that. We can cover it another time. It's just basically your genes, not your genes you're wearing, the genes that are in your cells and DNA in relation to longevity and protect against disease. Now, that's probably a little bit of a function that's of a the cellular cleanup, isn't right. it? Right. Yeah. And that could be a stretch because I mean, there's not a lot of studies that can support that, but they showed in rats that it does help. So I'm assuming in human it probably does. I'm not saying that you are not going to get cancer or anything, but why not try it to help prevent that, I guess? Um, weight loss and insulin resistance. And in bold, she says, in men. Yes, because... Well, I, we're going to, we're going to talk about this. You know, there's a, there's a difference, or at least there appears to be a difference in fasting between men and women and, um, weight loss and insulin resistance, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Lowers inflammation, obviously from, I think, so eating carbs, like processed carbs, basically I, I feel like my joints hurt. Yes. A lot. Yes. I mean, it's not like so bad to where I can't move, but you do notice a difference. You know, you're walking down the steps, you're like, eh, my knees feel a little weird, you know, stuff like that. Heart health, it's going to help with that as well as uh, decrease the risk factors for heart disease. Um, it's going to help with diabetes, stuff like that, just because obviously you're not eating throughout the day. You're not spiking your insulin throughout the day. Um, and what else? Let me see. Brain health. You want to talk about brain health? Because my brain health is like minimal right now. <laughs> it is Monday. It is Monday. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it it's good for your brain health for the same reason that it's good for cellular health and for organ health. Um, anytime that your body is not having to digest food and it can move into that uh, that cellular cleanup mode, then, you know, it's basically all of your cells, including the cells in your brain, are sort of cleaning out all of the debris and all the stuff it doesn't need. Um, and uh, it aids in the growth of new nerve cells, and it it may protect against things like Alzheimer's disease. I wonder if it can, it probably won't reverse it, I would assume. It, you know, it might slow I, the process down. I don't know of any studies that would show that fasting, and, and again, it would be so hard to conduct a study like that. Because you don't almost have to have someone that doesn't have it and then inject yeah. them with it and see how it reacts. Right, and right. I don't think you can even do that, to be honest. No, I, I mean, it would be very difficult to study um, fasting in, in, in Alzheimer's, but... Um, 
but they are, you know, there, there are connections showing that, you know, it's probably good for brain health. Um, and it probably can have a somewhat protective effect and maybe depending on, um, depending on how far the Alzheimer's has progressed, um, it could potentially bring a person back to, you know, uh, uh, better state. Yes. A better state. Okay. So, um, we also we obviously already talked about the anti-aging, longevity, stuff like that. Um, and another benefit that's not even like scientific, I don't even have to plan my meals. Because usually meal planning is a pain. Oh, yeah. I hated it. When I was doing like yeah. three small or six meals a day every three hours, I hated that. Oh, yeah. I, hated I mean, that's eating. a lot of work. I hated eating every three hours. Like It felt like a chore. Right. So I think that's one other benefit. Yeah, and, and I mean, when you think about it, it could potentially, I've heard some people say that they save a lot of money, depending on the type of fasting. That <laughs> depending well, on what they're I mean, eating, basically too. You're, yeah. I mean, you know, you're skipping a meal. You're not eating. So, you know, it saves you some time. It saves you some money. Right. And what else you got here? Something about women? I'm not a woman, so she will cover the women's stuff. Well, again, the, the caveat to a lot of this. Now, I, I think that some of the benefits, for example, I think fasting is good for, for, auto, for cellular autophagy, for that sort of cellular cleanup that we talked about. I think it's good across the board. But I think for women, what we have to remember is that most of the studies on fasting that have been done in humans have been done in men. Um And unfortunately, the few studies in women that have been done in women, they show an almost opposite reaction to fasting when it comes to blood glucose regulation. So we're going to, I think we're going to talk about that um, because the, the next, uh, the next question is who should maybe avoid intermittent fasting. And so if you want to lead off with, you know, yeah, I'll start with the other, the easy stuff. So if you're overweight, underweight, what the, yeah, underweight, if you're overweight, you should probably try it. But if you're (laughs) underweight, um, you might have history of eating disorder, which, um, obviously Kelly can speak to that. Um, you obviously want to consult your doctor, especially if you have an eating disorder, um, in regards to that. Cause I mean, if you can't, if you can't control that disorder, you can't control your mindset around that. I would thinking fasting is just going to make that more prevalent and it's going to make it worse. So, um, and then it says, why is this bad for women? Um, so again, the studies on fasting in humans have been done in men. And unfortunately those few studies that have been done with women, they paint a different picture. Um, they, they show that women often experience decreased glucose tolerance hormonal upset and eventual weight gain. So this is something for women that should be undertaken very carefully. Um, fasting either too long or too often, in my opinion, can be bad for women. Women have to remember that they are meant to bear children. Our hormonal systems are very complex and very sensitive to anything that our body would consider to be a famine or a depleted energy state. Right. And so those things can get out of whack very, very quickly. Um, And that's why it's, I mean, overall, that's why it's so much harder for us. And I think we discussed this maybe in one of our other podcasts. That's why it's so much harder for women to lose weight in general, no matter what diet you attempt or what what diet we attempt. Your hormone thing is, I think it plays way too big of a, well, a bigger effect than in men than women are supposed to have a a certain level of body fat. And again, that just goes back to, you know, we are built to bear children. So we need to have that extra body fat in anything that our body perceives as, you know, a threat to that, um, is probably going to cause problems. So if you're fasting too long or too often, it could be detrimental. So what I gather for women is that a shorter fasting window may still help with life extension and health and might help you lose some weight, but longer fasting windows uh, may be counterproductive for weight loss um, in the long run um, and for general health in the long run for women. Um, And I have read that most women of childbearing age should probably cap their daily fast at about 14 hours. Probably shouldn't go longer than that. Yeah, I don't think think they should anyways. Right. My wife gets very angry when she's hungry so (laughs) 
<laughs> my husband would say probably say the same thing yeah, about me. Yeah. <laughs> so let's make sure there's food around. <laughs> right. So other you know safety side effects. Um, so one side effects you're going to be hungry. Obviously, you're going to have hunger pain. Initially, right. Yeah, belly's going to be talking to you. You may feel weak. Obviously, since you're not used to the fasting part, and this will more than likely be a very temporary um, thing that your body will adapt to. You're just going right. to get used to it. Um, if you have any medical conditions, you definitely need to consult your doctor, um, especially before doing any sort of fast, even if it's one of the shorter ones. Um, diabetes, problem with blood sugar, low blood pressure, any meds, underweight, history of eating disorder, trying to have a baby, women, history of whatever that word is. What is that? <laughs> Menorrhea. So yeah. that would be loss of your period. Got it. Okay. And then pregnant or breastfeeding. You probably shouldn't be doing it because I mean, especially with breastfeeding. Yeah. I know that, um, I think it's what, like 500 calories every time you breastfeed. I don't, I don't know. That's for what sure Johanna was that. telling me. And she was, she just dropped all her baby weight within right. like a month. It was right. crazy. I breastfed for uh, four months and, um, it, I, I definitely, the weight just peeled right off of me and that, you know, not all women have that experience with breastfeeding, but it peeled off of me. Um, but I, I think we should also add in here that, um, fasting probably is not a good thing for kids. Either. Yeah, I would, I would, no. Probably yeah. They're going to be hang- hangry. Well, right. My son was getting hangry the other day. We right. couldn't figure out what was wrong. Like, do you want this? Do you want this? Once we fed him, he's fine. So we ain't right. doing that. Um, so uh, can you drink during a fast? I put the wrong answer. You can only drink water. <laughs> well, again, that depends on the reasons that you're fasting. But, you know, only water. in general, it should be, it, it probably should only be water. If you're fasting for weight loss, caffeine is okay, but... You know, probably nothing that's going to have any calories. Okay. Can you take supplements while fasting? Uh, yeah, but some of them are taking food or fat soluble, especially like your medications. I know they are. Right. Yeah. And, and if you're on medications or, you know, anything like that, you should definitely consult your doctor before you do any sort of fasting because some medications and, you know, some supplements, they are better absorbed with food. Mm-hmm. And so you need to be sure on that. Um, can you work out? And I did the wrong answer again. Look at that. I'm you did? Yeah. You oh. can work out. Yeah. But it says to take some BCAAs. But if that's during your fasting window, you should not because it actually increases your insulin. It does. I it know. Does, it yeah. does. And, and they actually just came out with some new information about uh, BCAAs and, and the insulin response and stuff. So, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. We could talk about that in another podcast. Cool. But but, um, but yeah, you know, I got used to, it takes a little bit of time, but you can actually get used, your body becomes used to working out fasted. Um, and I did experience now, even still, I prefer working out fasted versus fed. Yeah, I feel fine. Yeah, I yeah. feel great when I'm fasted and I work out. Um, and then I usually eat within an hour after working out. But, but it, it takes a little bit of time to get to that point where you feel good while you're working out fasted. Okay. So, um, will it cause muscle loss? All weight loss is going to have muscle loss. As long as you keep your protein intake high, you'll be somewhat fine. You're going to lose right. it no matter what. I mean, it's just not something unless you're taking other stuff. Right. Right. Um, will it slow your metabolism? No, it would actually boost your metabolism depending on how long you fast. Um, and obviously we already talked about kids and definitely not fasting. We don't need them to be angrier than they already are sometimes. So. So, I mean, like to close it off though, um, I think we should just say, you know, if, if fasting is something that is interesting to you or that you think would work for you, give it a try, try not, you know, don't, don't go all out and start too fast and consult your doctor, right? Consult your doctor before you give it a try. And, um, we hope some of our tips today were helpful. I don't know. Do you have anything else to add? TJ? No, I think, Hey everyone, this is TJ and Kelly with the initiative project podcast like what you heard please like comment and subscribe and if you have any questions you'd like us to cover please email us at initiative 